Hey there, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel, whatever it is, I don't care. Uh, nice seeing you in. Uh, we're having sort of a special kind of TED Talks today because I've got multiple people going on instead of just one because this has been kind of a crazy day. Um, it's things have exploded and we're going to explain why because wow. Uh, so I've got Monty Cook, Alexander Newell and Jonathan Sims here. So, Monty Cook, for those in the RPG industry, you may recognize the name. Uh, he's worked on many different systems and projects in the past and currently is one of the spearhead people of Monty Cook Games, uh, doing things like the Cypher system, which, if you're on this channel, probably familiar with it. I have a couple of videos about it. I will tell you that. Um, and we've got Alex and Johnny here, which, if you are at all familiar with the Rusty Quill or the Magnus Archives, also probably kind of a big name for you because, yeah, a lot of people, like you, you guys mentioned, you have a rampant fan base and i am discovering this <laughs> um that's, so that's welcome, a word for it welcome on terrifyingly the organized that's that's how we for, describe them it really is it really is um so <laughs> let's <clears throat> most of the people probably know who you are but like just to do little intros anyways let's go through each one of you just to allow you to give your own blurbs and say hello um we'll start with monty cook there how's it going bud you want to you want to say hello and who he is uh hello um i'm monty cook uh, uh, of monty cook games um and uh i've uh, i'm, a, I'm a, a tabletop game designer rpg game designer that i have been working on this uh for over 30 years um which means i've never had a real job and <laughs> uh i um uh, I'm very excited about working with these fellows on a brand new game. Uh, it's the it's the game that I'm I'm literally working on now, uh, the Magnus Archives. All right, let's uh, let's jump over to Alex. Uh, Alex, why don't you give a little little intro, Diddy? There, sure. Uh, I'm Alexander J. Newell. I'm the founder and CEO of Rusty Quill Limited. Um, people who are fans of the Magnus Archives might recognize my voice as uh, Martin Potassium Blackwood, as I've decided the K stands for. Best, best joke a fan ever made. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was also a, a GM for years via Rusty Cool Gaming, which was our, our actual play podcast. The first one we, we had, the first podcast we made, actually. So not, not a stranger to uh, the RPG scene. And yeah, couldn't be more thrilled to be hanging out with such lovely people. Oh, and also Johnny's here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, uh, shots fired. Um, Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Johnny, um, uh, writer, uh, voice actor, um, games designer. Like, like I mean, I, I've got a 21st century creative career, uh, which means you <laughs> kind of do everything until something uh, hits. And in this case, what hit was the Magnus Archives. Um, so I'm the uh, main writer, sort of co-creator with Alex, uh, and the voice of uh, the titular character, uh, not, not the titular character, well, kind of the titular character, Jonathan That's Sims. Awesome. Um, so. I've also been uh, like role-playing since I was eight years old, so obviously uh, very familiar with uh, a good deal of Monty's work and absolutely thrilled. Wait, wait, uh, what? How what? old? <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm 34. Uh, and my dad, my dad was like one of the like when I say the OG role players, I mean he has copies of puzzles and games from like the magazine from like the ni early nineteen seventies, where it's talking about this new Dungeons and Dragons. It's a new spin on wargaming, where rather than playing a whole army, you just play a single. It's crazy, uh, a, a single, and like um, so, like yeah, I just it, love I, the image of your your dad sat there. <laughs> This will never catch on. I hope. So. Oh, he was like, "Oh, brilliant! I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life." And in I'm, still grappling. I'm still grappling with the fact that you are the same age as my career. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, Monty. Like, I may look old and haggard, but I'm only 39 myself. Like, you're like the, right. the old right. Planescape stuff and Next everything you've topic, done before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know. Um, yeah. <laughs> But we've all experienced your wonderfulness for our entire lives. Anyway, um, my point is, really psyched to have Monty working on a game based on my podcast. <laughs> now that you've made him feel terrible, let's move on. 
Um, Trying to make you feel good. <laughs> so the Magnus archives, um, I was, I, I'll be honest before the initial announcement of it, I wasn't, I was sort of like, I've heard of it because I have some friends that are like, I want to say deep into it. Like you're, you, when you mention your fan base gets deep, like I'm talking like, like they live and breathe. They constantly talk about it, but, um, I, I didn't, I don't normally listen to many podcasts myself, but then when this was announced, I'm like, okay, well, this is my thing. Let's take a look, listen. And, uh, wow. Yeah. I can see why they get deep. Um, it's, it's pretty damn good actually. Uh, right up my bag. I love like the horror elements. That's, that's definitely my thing really enjoy in that so we knew this was going to be a big deal we were even joking in the cypher unlimited stream that like the last backer that they did for that mcg did was good like you you guys are stepping it up every time but we knew this one was going to be a deal and we were trying to like even like sort of like bet on how high it was going to go um i definitely did not bet high enough because at this rate it is going to go nuts um like you funded like that like no problem um you're we're about seven hours in and you're fast you're quickly approaching like 600k so oh like what are your reactions God. to the fact that you guys have just just <laughs> exploded so i i mean i've 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 obviously not in the the, the same sort of league or, or quantity as Monte Cooper, but I've, I've done a few kickstarters myself so i very much got into the habit of like kind of just looking at the number that is currently there like i mm -hmm. i often find with like kickstarters i'm involved with if i'm like well this could mean this this could mean this i <laughs> i uh, like i i i lose it my my eyes sort of uh, like it means that as soon as it starts slowing down i'm like no no, go up higher, <laughs> you stupid little number. Um, even though in this case it's a stupid colossal number. Um, so at the moment, I'm I'm trying not mm -hmm. to be like, where could it go? I'm just like, it's how much now? Brilliant. I um, uh, so I I started doing crowdfunding very early in sort of the crowdfunding realm, um, and mm -hmm. uh. It is it is funny to me because uh, the first uh, game Kickstarter that I did um, was for Numenera and uh, it broke all kinds of records at the time and um, we have broken that we have we have surpassed Numenera's entire run uh, today in the first seven hours of of this. Which I think it goes to show the the strength of the Magnus Archives. It goes to show the the growth of crowdfunding in general as just a a mainstay, particularly in role playing games. Um, you know, with, with with games being pretty much the dominant category of every. Uh, crowdfunding platform that there is mm -hmm. um, and so you know it's fantastic it's fun but it's also kind of it's just the way we at MCG do business now uh, it's it's the way that we we reach our audience and we have a fantastic uh, very active very tuned in audience of, of people who just you know, wait for the next campaign, and uh, we love that. And um, we, we, you know, couldn't couldn't be happier with the way today is going. Except, of course, you know, at the beginning of the day when the backer kit servers couldn't even really handle us, and uh, <laughs> yeah. the page kept locking up and whatnot. But yeah. you know, I guess if you're going to have a problem, that's not a terrible one. To have. You're too good. <laughs> Well, speaking personally, um, when it comes to crowdfunders, od oddly enough, uh, when it comes to crowdfunding, I I don't think I've ever done crowdfunding that wasn't for something to do with game design. Now I think about it, like mm -hmm. I've backed a huge number of game design things um, for for products and so on. But go on, Johnny. Magnus Protocol. Hello. Say again. What about the Magnus Protocol? I was getting to that bit. I was getting to that. Bit. Getting to that bit. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, let him finish, rusty, man. <laughs> But Rusty Quill, as 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 well, Johnny oh. has sort of uh, really subtly foreshadowed to as a as a master of the craft. <laughs> uh, basically, That's yeah. So Rusty Quill, 
Rusk will began engaging with crowdfunding. Oh god, last year technically, um, and yeah, th- there was a couple of things that I learned from that one, which I've, I've applied this time round. One of which was um, due to a slight underestimation. Um, we we I think we funded in something like less than a minute last time, <laughs> but that was because um, there was a minor lag in rollout, which meant that we sort of funded before we launched, which was a bit odd. That was a that was an odd one. Um, it was just a, a a weird system glitch, but that was something we had to catch up with. But yeah, we've we've learned previously that um, we 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 now get in the habit of warning platforms uh, because the, I, I keep saying it, our, our fandom's terrifyingly organized on its own. Never mind adding like the reams and reams of uh, fans of Monty Cook's work. So as a result. We, yeah, we we kind of an- anticipated some little hiccups, but we've, you know, you can only say so many times. I, I guarantee you, almost everyone will log in at once, and they're like, "No, they're, no one ever does that. No one. Oh no, they all logged in at once." And they like, all yeah, do. I, 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 sorry, that, that'll happen. Um, so yeah, I I I wasn't surprised that there were website struggles, but I'll admit that yeah, when you start seeing those that, as Johnny says, tiny little number get bigger and bigger you you, 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 you just kind of strap in a little bit, don't you? <laughs> I will say, uh, my advice um, for anyone out there thinking of doing a games Kickstarter uh, and this is tried and true it's just a really good idea uh, it's uh, get Monty Cook Games to do <laughs> just all the setup and get a huge amount of amazing art assets and put a phenomenal amount of effort into making it look amazing. Yeah, it's uh, a really it, good it's idea. Always, it's always worked for me. Do that. <laughs> Make MCG do all work. Got it. Okay. And, and you know, it is a lot of work and it's oh, yeah. very little of it is my work. Um, it, I have a I have a fantastic team. Uh, you have right a really you. good team. Just as a and quick shout out to them, they have been absolutely yeah. just everyone I've ever out the interacted over with and over again. from MCGs. Just amazing. <laughs> so. Yeah, really good team. Yeah, and and you know a lot of a lot of crowdfunding experience there. You know a lot of uh, you know knowing what to do and when to do it and whatnot. Um, I mean, we're still making mistakes, of course, but um, uh, I'm really, really, ha- you know, uh, Air Wider, our, our art director, Charles Ryan, uh, Tammy Ryan, uh, just, uh, you know, the customer service people, um, just everybody is just kind of bearing on all cylinders and couldn't be more proud. Yeah, super, super happy to hear like how uh, you're getting this. Uh, I, I want to say almost down to a science at this point. You've done enough of them that you're kind of like you said, you were one of the earlier adopters for some of the larger like crowdfunding projects. I remember I remember when Numenera was first announced and I'm like, I was also new to like, what is this crowdfunding thing like? I, it, you really have helped paved the way for for a lot of companies to be like hey i i can do a different business model that doesn't just have to be i've got to make it and then hope it sells well and we'll see back when kickstarter was hey do you know you can donate to help detroit get a statue of robocop (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) it is really funny to look back on those early days of kickstarter where they clearly thought that they were going to be funding like someone's modern dance yep. um, proposal, you know, recital and, and things like that. And, and then suddenly became this huge, huge thing. The internet is the internet. I remember that guy that wanted to make potato salad and he wanted like $10 for, it and he made like $50,000. So <laughs> you never know. I mean, to be fair, the like, early Kickstarter helped uh, like fund albums for my weird steampunk space pirate oh, band. Shit, I forgot so, about uh, them. You know. I forgot about this crowdfunding. <laughs> That's, that's your early Kickstarter in a bottle there. Yeah, all right. So technically, Magnus Archives only <laughs> exists thanks to crowdfunding, because uh, if I hadn't have seen those shows, we wouldn't have paired up. And Yeah, yeah you see? It, what a it web. all comes back to that, I guess. It all comes down to the wonderful dumpster fire that is the internet that we all love. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I've been combing through the different 
like communities and camps and everything lately um, because obviously we've got a mix of people that know both like the role playing games and the Magnus Archive but we also have plenty of people in both camps where like they don't know one of the other you know Magnus fans that are like what's an RPG and then like RPG guys are like what is this thing you're talking about um, so uh, like I, even today I was talking with them and some of them are like I really love the Magnus Archives but I don't know what our role playing games are about and so uh, I figured maybe if we can give like a little like quick sales pitch from the different sides, maybe we can help spur people into it. So let's start, um, you know, let's start on the Magnus Archives side um, with Johnny and Alex here. So obviously, like you've got ties in some RPG stuff already. Um, you you mentioned yourself and you've got this like really cool story and like background and all of these like really neat details going. What's your like sales pitch or even like I don't know, maybe positive prompts for people about making this a social, like, interactive game. Alex, you want to take this one to start? Oh, sure, yeah. Very courteous. Um, so, the Magnus Archives is a bit of an odd bunny to explain, and sometimes when you try and explain it, you end up describing it in a way that, whilst accurate, almost feels like a miscell. Uh, an example being like, oh, it's, it's dead straightforward. It's a... It's a uh, Massively epic cosmic horror sitcom. <laughs> Te- technically, that works as a description, yeah. but uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's a, it's an odd sell. Um, honestly, what it is is there is there is a, a sort of core balance in the Magnus Archives of like creepy horror stories, um, anthology, not just anthology stuff, but sort of broad interacting narrative world that has a lot of. Um, moving parts and moving players and moving organizations interacting Mm -hmm. with one another all within this sort of grand rubric but then interlaced through that it's actually driven by interpersonal character development which lends itself very strongly to rpgs so if i if i have to play the like what's an rpg card for for (laughs) magnus fans it's it's the idea you know that basically Monty Cook has done a very good job of finding a way to let you navigate this large, coherent rubric without um, sort of breaking the stories, as it were, that will both emerge and be planned and blah, blah, blah. And then on the Magnus Archive side, it, it's compatible because you, it, it leans into all of the strengths of RPG in that it's, uh, you know, gradual reveal, uh, emergent story... It is, like I said, those interactive um, character elements on the sort of meta arc level and things like that. So weirdly enough, although it wasn't necessarily intended as that, as like the pitch, it's literally a party of people forced to interact with one another under gradually more horrifying circumstances. (laughs) And if only they could cooperate in these sequence of events they might you know overcome some challenges grow in the telling in some way and perhaps you know make some progress i mean cosmic horror i wouldn't hold your breath but the yeah. the interactions are quite like patent once you break it down into little 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 chunks um i've never been the best at explaining this stuff though i go a little bit uh, all over the shop and, and getting all structural well, johnny do you have any thoughts for me i think that actually like magnus archives and uh, role playing games are kind of uh, a good match uh largely because like the 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 sort of storytelling that you have in the magnus archives is sort of very episodic individual sort of things happening that sort of weave together gradually into a single grand arcing meta plot and that's something i learned from running loads of role-playing campaigns (laughs) so like i think magnus does have a lot of rpg stuff in its in its core dna um (laughs) And I think that, um, like, I always loved sort of taking, uh, like, taking a, a, a setting, taking, like, an established thing and through an RPG, making it my own and, like, being like, well, no, this is my version. This is, like, oh, this, this character, pff, get out of here. But you, you can stay. Um, and so I think that really, that, that, that all really lends itself so well to uh, what, like, Role playing can can bring to the Magnus Archives, and I'll be honest: if any Magnus Archives fans are like, "What's role playing?" Check the feed. There's a bunch of little actual play episodes we dropped in there occasionally as a treat. <laughs> there Including you go. like yeah. explanations. Now I think about it of like, "What's RPG? How does this work? <laughs> How is this going to play?" 
Yeah, jo- Johnny and I are, are quite massive nerds thinking about it, so as a result, that, that's what? your last one. That doesn't sound right. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry. I, Johnny's I'm... a massive nerd and I'm super, super cool, you see. Because I use words like cool still. Um, very but serious. I, exactly. Uh, but yeah, I think there's... Uh, let, let's let's just say there's a there's an overlap in experiences here. I think it's especially with the description in in the back or how like money's design or designing designed. I don't even know where it's stage to say, um, but it's like a series of investigations instead of adventures or whatnot. I think works very well in the pseudo episodic nature of at least everything I've experienced so far within the Magnus archives and the different case files. Yeah, when we, we try to keep it episodic right up to the end, like. Yeah. Keep it so yeah. those want that they are to some degree or another self contained and listenable to. Makes it easier to consume that way as well, f- for sure. You don't have to get lost all the time. Yeah. As much as people talk about how well uh, RPGs can simulate regular, sort of more standard narrative fiction, you know, an RPG can re- replicate a. Uh, a movie, okay. It can do a a a, a book, okay. But um, where it really shines is capturing the feel of something that's uh, an episodic uh, narrative with an overarching story on top of that episodic nature, which is exactly what the Magnus Archives um, is, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it, it is a perfect fit uh, for RPGs. I must admit, though, and I'm not going to actually give an actual. I'm not going to actually give a real spoiler. But as I was listening to the the podcast the first time, because um, I've listened to them, uh, I've listened to the whole thing twice now. Um, and um, the first time, once we got into the final season. I was entertained, but I was really starting to have doubts that this could be uh, a game. I was, uh, I was like, oh, okay, uh, that's that's gonna be. T-. And then we get to the very, very end, and it sets itself up absolutely perfectly, all, all seemingly intentionally. Um, you know, probably not, <laughs> but from my point of view, it's like, oh. You did that for me. <laughs> you ended you, the way you ended this. You made it so that I could make this game. Thank you, Johnny. Um. <laughs> I don't think we were like it wasn't specifically RPGs, but we very much wanted like the, we the the ending we wanted to be open to like a lot of different stuff, uh, which and like RPGs especially like felt like a very natural fit for that. So like it was like semi intentional. I mean, also, <laughs> let's be honest, while she should always know your ending and so on, there's, it's, it's not great writing, just speaking from a career perspective to go, and this is the end, and any and all other interpretations, you know, sequels or prequels, cannot possibly exist! This is the only thing! Like, this is a good way to make sure that the thing never has a life beyond the, uh, the original. But I do, I do remember explicitly having that conversation with Monty, being like, "Yeah, season that last season's a huh? That's, that's, just, that's just that's just everywhere, isn't it?" And he's like, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so you're here to hear. There's no spoilers. Don't worry, people. We just know it gets exciting, which <laughs> or, exactly. uh, and and is able to be continued on. A little bit of a. I'm very a proud. I'm, I'm very sharing. proud of the last season. I think, from a storytelling narrative horror point of view, I think it's fantastic. Uh, from a trying to design a cohesive RPG uh, that you and all your friends can uh, play through and have a good it's time. It's also compatible bit, with earlier bit, seasons. Bit more challenging. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Just once you quit, you're fine. You can just design multiple completely <laughs> independent game systems that mesh flawlessly, you, right? The, with exactly like a minimal word count. The final episode make it all perfectly easy. It just works. It just works. Because <laughs> now, now Monty has to deal with the fan base going like, but in this episode at minute 27, this oh, is they different will. than this. They will. There's, you cut like, uh, we, we had, like we, we, we've had a couple of conversations with Monty where it's like, look, <laughs> like, the fan base is going to fan base occasionally. Yeah. Like, you do your due diligence, you make every effort, but 
Sometimes I you mean, should be like, oh, no, we, we did just straight up forget that's what we said in that episode, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm remembering specifically a conversation of timelines where it's like, right, can we... Should we should we do anything to do with timelines? Johnny goes, well, I probably wouldn't do that. Oh, why uh, is there like a new one that's in there? It's like, no, yeah. it just doesn't work. <laughs> well, yeah, there's just there's a couple of things that just there's yeah, an error. It was like, it we want to put, put a timeline into the book, work. and I'm like, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> forget half of what's in it i don't know <laughs> well I, a lot of it a lot of it was the uh, um like i it's a very big and very complicated uh, tapestry of stories and connections and i pride myself on being able to keep track of all of those connections really well mm-hmm. just not quite so good at keeping track of the date all of those different connections happen so there might be some like there's nothing that you can't fudge if you think about it hard enough. But <laughs> yeah, no one's ever in two places at once because I was very careful on my checks of that. But yeah, there's a there's a little there's a there's a there's, a there's a few there's a there's a few moments where like hang on this character would have been how old when this happened? Oh, one of those situations. Yeah, in the end, most people enjoy it, but you're always going to get some of those yeah, people this is that it. are like, this is um, it. actually. <laughs> Yeah. So, like, yeah, there's there's always going to be a few um actuallys, but I'm pretty confident that uh, like we we we're, we're doing we're we're all doing our best to make sure that uh, that this is as as close to a law bible as uh, as you're going to get. And of course, the main focus is to create your own stories to like make your exactly. own investigations and stuff like that. Exactly. Like there there was a like there was a real conversation up top where I was like, oh, do we really have to give? To really have to give the archivist Jonathan some stats. I like. I want people to be doing their own thing, and uh, like all the marketing people were like, "Yes, you have to give the iconic <laughs> characters from your podcast stats in this game." <laughs> and I'm like, "But what about their stories on there? Like horrible ways." Oh yeah, <laughs> they make. I don't even want to mention things that are going to happen there. We're gonna we're gonna fade to black on that one. Uh, <laughs> So, I think uh, this will appeal to a very specific type of GM, which is definitely <laughs> a uh, a mold that I personally fit into. <laughs> so on the flip side of things, let's go to Monty here for that for the fans of Cypher System or even tabletop gamers in general that may not be as familiar with the, the Magnus Archive. You kind of already answered it for the most part, but like what is what is the draw here that you think that, that works so well? I think there's a lot of things. Um it it and it is sort of the investigative nature makes uh so that you know today we're going to be looking into you know these weird disappearances and next week in the session we're going to be uh dealing with this horrible monster that is you know stalking the back alleys and and you know in, in that very rpg way of tonal shifts and uh, uh, kind of content shifts. It's not It's not going to be very repetitive. It's not going to be, oh, you know, same old thing this week, right? Uh, because the, the Magnus Archives world um, that is created is, is, is so dynamic and full of different, to put it in just really basic uh, RPG terms, right? Just lots of different things to do right and um but yet there is a core through line right it is an easy thing to answer the most important question that you have when you sit down to do a rpg which is what do the characters do in this game right and in this game they uh investigate the supernatural uh and uh and try not to get consumed by the forces behind it, or at least not get consumed immediately, right? Because yeah. as Alex said, it's it's cosmic horror, and there is an aspect of of uh, you know, sort of a wonderfully deliciously dark. Uh, uh, I hesitate to use the word nihilism um, that often comes with uh, cosmic horror, but but there is still that aspect of. Oh, oh my God! Uh, things are really nasty, and it's going to be really, really difficult here to succeed and survive. But maybe we can, right? And I think that's what separates it from other types of other flavors of of cosmic horror, because you, the, the Magnus Archives does offer that 
but maybe we can uh, that that other sort of cosmic horror settings don't. Um, and uh, so I think that it it also lends itself. I think this will be a very easy game on the GM because uh, the GM. Well, first of all, has five seasons of a podcast to draw upon for inspiration. Um, you know, a, a, any any episode of which could become a, a an entire session um, of the game. But you know, it is it is it is very easy, I think, to take any experience that you want to incorporate um, and and put it in the game. And, and in fact, I have a I have already a section on you know the other things that you might like about horror that don't happen to show up in the podcast but what if you want to drag that into your magnus archives game how do you make that work right and so the different kinds of of horrors and monsters and you know creepy pasta and on all of that kind of stuff <laughs> yeah. uh it, and and it, and it works really well um, so I think, think that GMs, rather than being flummoxed and not knowing what to do, are going to be, you know, if they have a problem, it's going to be, well, you know, how do I cram in all the things that I want to cram into this? That's a good problem to have. Yeah. And whilst, whilst avoiding spoilers, just to pick up on what Monty was saying there a little bit, I think Johnny, Johnny pulled an absolute blind with Archive specifically in that with, without diving into spoilers, you ba you basically wrote a way to recodify any horror into the terms of this universe very coherently. And again, I ca I literally cannot dive into that without spoilers, but <laughs> I can't really don't do it. Like the whole the whole point is that you found a way to do it. So there, I can't think of any type of horror that doesn't transmogrify through just because of the shape I mean, of how it works. If it scares you, it can go in there because you just need to think. Well, mm -hmm. how does it scare me? But yeah, effectively. Yeah, no, for sure. I I think it's uh it's it's a great way to set it up. And with horror, you you can really branch out. I find with horror, like you, it doesn't have to be a specific like culture or genre or like people from all over the world are feel that that horror and dread from very different things and i really like the fact that you can like you can branch out with it even within the magnus archives like you guys already kind of branched out from what i've experienced several times and some pretty neat stuff um so you can really customize it to your own which is super nifty yeah like we <laughs> were like i mean at the end of the day uh like i'm a white guy from britain so there's a sort of a uh, uh, most of the horror stories in the Magnus Archives, the podcast, are like the the horror stories as conceived and written by a white girl in Britain. So there is there are huge swathes of like folklore and horror tradition that are like so deep and rich and wonderful and like fundamentally they weren't mine to to to, to tell in archives, but if they're yours, take this game and tell them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to see where that goes as far as those different, like, I almost want to say like sub genres at this point are going to, to be for mm. the game. And also you with money cook, I did want to touch upon the fact that obviously horror is not for everybody, but even if it is for you, obviously in modern day RPGs, it's good to have certain safety tools and stuff like that. Um, and Monica games, you uh, you have your checklist. I know in Stay Alive and Old Gods, you you had very good um, like support for that. Um, is your I'm assuming there's probably going to be similar support in the Magnus Archives for like notes about horror. Absolutely. Um, so we have uh, a free PDF that you can download from our website. It's called Consent in Gaming, and it talks about all of these issues and has the checklist that you're talking about. Um, this product uh, being a horror game like uh, like Stay Alive and like Old Gods of Appalachia um, will probably have its own sort of consent and checklist uh, aspect to it um, that, you know, is just uh, the way that 
you know, you can find out ahead of time how far is too far, right? And yeah. and that's going to be different for everybody. It's going to be different for every table. Um, and and you know, the way to handle that with, uh, you know, consideration, compassion, and maturity, while still allowing you to create some, you know, hopefully really terrifying moments right um uh i think is is part of the trick but yeah, here's the thing about horror um that i have found true to be uh uh an aspect of of role-playing games is that you know in the best role-playing game situation you are you are activating the player's real emotions, right? It's not just I'm, you know, I'm playing that I'm happy. You, you're actually making them happy, right? You're, you're yeah. same with misery, whatever. But the, you know, the easiest emotion really to trigger in somebody like that is is probably fear, and so uh, you know, it is it is such a such a wonderful moment for a for a GM when you look around the table and you see that your players are actually kind of scared, right? They're, I mean, it's they're not just <laughs> pretending, right? You're not just saying, "Oh, my character is scared," and so I run away. You're like, "Let's get out of here," right? And that's uh, it, it makes horror gaming one of my absolute favorite types of gaming. Is is that I I can I can still remember way back when you know, a, a person saying to me, you know, I don't think that horror actually works in an RPG because, you know, what fun is it to pretend to be scared? And I said, you need to come over to my house and play a game. And, uh, and, 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 and definitely changed his mind on that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a great avenue. Um, and, you know, all the, the checklist does is that it, makes sure that you know you go from you know scaring your players is great traumatizing your players is terrible right like you like anything that's going to make the uncomfortable feelings last longer than the session is a problem mm -hmm. and so that's that's what the checklist is for um just to make sure that you don't cross those boundaries i mean it's the same as enjoying like there are all sorts of like negative emotions, negative feelings um, that are like fun to explore in a safe environment, and it's always just making sure. And like with and like with anything, and like fear is an unpleasant emotion that is great fun to explore in a safe environment. Like roller coasters, falling is a yeah. scary thing that's great fun to do in a safe environment, and so. Like, like with anything else that's like mining those negative, uh, negative feelings for fun, safety is the absolute, absolute baseline essential for, for properly enjoying horror, especially in an RPG context, I think. I know, like, like we obviously we're not going to get into it here, but I, I know there's conversations about safety tools and whether they're needed or not for, but like, honestly, like, it doesn't hurt to have them. It doesn't hurt to have them out to just make sure people are comfortable. Why not? I mean, I, I see. I never see an issue to have them at the very like, least. Like <clears throat> I, I have had like I have groups where like the safety tool is like a short chat up top of a session mm -hmm. because we've been role playing with each other for like damn near a decade and know each other's tastes and limits inside out, um, but. With end, but like, but that's still a safety tool. That's still unlike. But with any sort of like new group, or if you're if you're going into something new, you always want to have that session zero. You always want those tools. You always want to make sure that everyone is because you don't always know. No. You know, I think I think just about everyone that I've ever spoken to who who sort of poo pooed the idea of safety tools. When you talk to them, you find out. They actually are using the safety tools. They just don't look at it that way, right? It's yeah. just, oh, I don't, you know, I don't want to push any of, of Bob's buttons, right? And But uh, mm -hmm. he's my friend, and we've been friends for years, so I know what those buttons are. Well, that's, you know, you, you, you're you just not 
physically using any extraneous thing, but but that's consent, right? That's safety mm -hmm. tools. That's all they are, right? It's yeah, just, it's just because it isn't codified doesn't mean that ultimately what you're trying to do is make sure that people are having fun with this thing that you're doing. And the second that you're sort of stripping that element out, well, it's 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 no longer a. a, a I don't. I, I never really like using the word game, but it's no, it's no longer that communal experience. You've made it something else, and yeah, like I, I can understand why some people don't like codifying it. I I personally think it's a very good idea, but yeah. at the same time, the the trick is just homing on the sentiment, and by that I mean. If you are having friends <laughs> playing your game or family playing your game or whatever, Keeping friends. the chances are you probably want them to have a positive experience. Right. So why not not make it miserable for them yeah. by 100%. deliberately doing something to do actually, that? It's such a fantastic point, uh, Monty, that like you're absolutely right. I think most of the people who like poo-poo sell safety tools and like, ah, we, uh, we need safety tools are the people who've been playing with like the same group for yeah. like 10, 20 years. And so like they know their group inside out. So like they're like, well, why would I need safety tools? Like it's just wasted words. I know all this stuff. But then because they think they don't need safety tools, they then go to like a convention or turn up a new group and treat yeah. the and treat these new groups or groups of strangers the same way they that they treat the table that they've known for for over a decade. And that's when you have problems. When you're like, "Well, this is fine at my table." You're just yeah. you're you're clearly just being really sensitive, and it's like everyone's it's different. That, that ain't it. different. Yeah, convention so, gaming is a very good uh, proving ground for. Uh, uh, actually, are you thinking about this mm -hmm. stuff? I find. So you heard it here. We are going to terrify you, but safely. So don't worry. You know you're going to take <laughs> it away, and that Monty Cook uh, feeds off your fear. Is is what we take away from this? Well, that's definitely true, <laughs> but on an opt-in basis. So ultimately, you know, it's all yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so a lot of these like questions people had, we didn't really need <clears throat> for the most part. Well, one of the things that a lot of people were asking about is how much involvement the actual like. No, without spoilers, of course. How much involvement a lot of the actual characters from the podcast are going to be intertwined into the story or into the book itself um precisely as much as you want them to okay uh, which is both all the way or not at all um and again trying to avoid spoilers <laughs> um at but all costs. uh but <laughs> we can give you that can give you that flexibility and still stay within the canon of the show yeah, okay. <clears throat> it actually came up i remember in pretty much the first conversation that uh johnny monty and i had with this was okay straight down the line that almost that exact question because it, it yeah it tends to have it normally you tend to see it lean one way or the other and all of us being on the same page of we just don't want to shut down an avenue of play because mm -hmm. we don't we don't need to have have fun the way you want to have fun so as far as like it's gone so far you've done an excellent job monty of just balancing that in such a way that i i really don't think they're mutually exclusive in any way yeah the characters and the monsters that you love from the podcast are there as resources but um you like again without spoilers <laughs> there are ways that you don't have to engage with them at all just never speak to any of the many, many characters with the name Jonathan Sims. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, you. <laughs> it, you know, it, it, it's again. This isn't this isn't a spoiler, right? That like, I think that while fans of the podcast are going to love the ability to go and talk to Jonathan and Martin and and you know and interact with them and whatnot, don't forget that there's there's a whole world outside of london right yeah. <laughs> that like you know the exciting thing is you know this setting up the first i'm hearing of this what's <laughs> yeah well it turns out um no it, that it uh you know just just uh, as a as a game master it would it would get me salivating to just start thinking about well what a, what you know what's going on in Los Angeles, right? What's going on in, you know, uh, Moscow, right? Uh, and just Toronto. 
perfect, right? I mean, that, and, and suddenly, you know, the creative juices start flowing and, you know, that weird, that, that weird legend that people talk about in, in Toronto, how can I incorporate that into the next investigation and, you know, create a statement about that. There's also the thing that like, for, for, for so th- I'm I'm a big fan. Like I'm a well, I'm a I'm a medium fan. A big fan of a lot of it of like you know the Warhammer 40k sort of universe. It's very like I grew up with it. It's very compelling. Orcs, brilliant, love them, my boys. They're but cool. uh, like a lot of cool characters in there. A lot of a lot of cool like operatic characters with guns for faces. But <laughs> if you want me to like put together a little Warhammer army, and you're like, hey. Do you want to? Do you want to play with like you know, or like I don't know Imperial Guard? Do you want to play with Commissar Yarrick? I'm like, no, that's 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 your guy. I want my own guy. I'm gonna get a generic Commissar, and I'm gonna tell you all 200 pages of his backstory. Yes. Um, and so I think there's a lot of there's going to be plenty of people who like love the Magnus Archives, love the world, want to play in that world. But if you're like so do you want do you want do you want to meet do you want to meet Tim? They're like, no, I want to make <laughs> I want to make my own guys, you know. And on the flip side, don't forget, like Magnus Archives is cast of thousands. Like if you sit there and tally, okay, just to throw Johnny under the bus, admittedly most of them have the same names, but like. <laughs> There's, there's a lot Am I allowed to characters. swear on this interview? <laughs> <laughs> My channel is well, fine with swearing, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's a there's a lot of characters in there where even if you you know you're like I, I kind of want to add some of my own stuff, but I don't want to like go core character, and I don't want to have to mm-hmm. do the like choice paralysis of do anything you want. So you just sit there and go. uh... There's there's literally thousands. You can just pick any touch point you want and be like, there's a character. I know how they interact with this world just by plucking it from the source material. But that doesn't mean that they're 100% codified. All you've been given is a, a hook. So actually, and that wasn't intentional, it's just the way the show works, is you have literally thousands of effectively character prompts, um, which I think can be very useful if you're at the risk of stealing a mechanical phrase, dabbling. I think that even kind of like answers the next things a lot. I found a lot of people were asking, which was already answered if you've seen other Monty Cook products as well. Um, I know with the Old Gods of Appalachia, there's like a blurb in the front being like, you don't need to know the podcast to enjoy this game. And a lot of people were asking me like, like, do we need to listen to this podcast or can we just enjoy it? And I'm pretty sure I know the answer to that one, especially with, with what you've been saying. Yeah, I mean, there is... The setting of the Magnus Archives is presented uh, at, in the game as much as it needs to be so that you can run a game there um, and and gives you those sort of tools to 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 set your game in the setting that that if you've never listened to the podcast, you can still play this game and 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 have a great time with it. Um, and uh, the thing that it, I will say, the thing that it isn't um, is uh, just a rehash of the absolutely wonderful uh, uh, wiki, the fan wiki that is out there, uh, uh, which is which, huge you know, and I, terrifyingly organized one. <laughs> I love it, man. That is mm-hmm. such a fantastic resource uh, for for me. Um, but you know, this is <laughs> but 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 this isn't this this book. This Magnus Archives RPG is not just going to be a, a, a catalog of of all the stuff in in the podcast. It is really going to be aimed at. Okay, here's here's the here's the stuff, but here's how to make it your own. Here's how to play a game here, not just uh, wiki in a hardcover book. Yeah, if if you see what I'm getting at. Yeah, well, I, I mean, always also- explained it to a lot of people. It's like you buy like the Lego set of the pirate ship. You don't have to make a pirate ship out of it. 
Yeah. Exactly. That is that's a that's a great analogy. I think right. it's one of those things that like <laughs> helps if you've listened to the podcast. Like or if speaking you're as least... one of the people who made the podcast, I think there's lots of nuances that are unlocked if you listen to the entire thing <laughs> and the Q and A's at least twenty times. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I'm, uh-huh. uh, uh, right. uh, I'm sorry. Let me retract my answer. No, you absolutely have to listen to the podcast. And all the ads. Yeah. And every single and ad. All the ads. <laughs> that's, where the, that's where the real nuance is. <laughs> uh, but, like, I, I think it's a similar question to, like, oh, do you have had, do you have to have, like, read a bunch of H.P. Lovecraft to play Call of Cthulhu, for instance? Yes. Yeah. Like, you know, do you have to have, uh, do you have to have watched every Star Wars movie to, to play, uh, like, Age of Rebellion or something like that? Uh, and it's like, no, of course not. It probably helps if you have a general idea of what the of what the tone and the vibe of the of the world is. But like, you you certainly don't need to. Uh, you certainly don't need to have. Like, you don't actually need to have listened to or read any of it. We say that, but I, I am going to say, as someone that's like just started getting into it within the past, well, since the initial thing dropped or whatever um it's worth getting into i'm not just saying this because these people happen to be on my channel right now it's legitimately worth getting into it's actually really fun to listen to um even at times where you're like i'm gonna turn the lights on today while i listen to it it's good (laughs) i i would say actually like speaking genuinely candidly for a second if you have never listened and are intending to play this game i'd recommend listening to an episode uh but only for the simple reason of you can get a lot of tone, ambience, the kind of feel of some of these things. I mean, I know it has lots of different modes and so on, but there's there's a big difference between that and tro- trolling your way through episode after episode after episode because it is quite big. Yeah, great really, really about- speak, just just skip to the final episode. Just listen to the oh, final God. episode. No, that's the final episode. Don't do that. Uh, that'll, I think that'll give you a nice summation that's of everything. That's- Big nose over him involved. right now. In seriousness, though, what I was going to say was the great thing about Magnus Archives, the podcast, is that you don't have to. Oh well, you know, just wait until season three. That's when it gets really good. No, it, it isn't. It isn't like that. And in fact, you know, to take Alex's advice, if you're going to listen to just one episode, I'd listen to the first one. Right. It sets up the the tone and the, the, you know, gives you kind of what you need to know. And like if you're if you're only going to listen to one, I think I'd probably recommend the first one. Just, you know, handy. And who knows? Maybe after that first one, you're like, yeah, that was all right. Maybe maybe I'll just hit play on the second. Yeah. So I don't (laughs) want to keep you guys on too long. Um, We're trying to keep this under an hour and we're fastly approaching that so uh let's let's try to keep this i have only one more thing that i uh i'm not probably far enough in it Uh, it's not a spoiler but a lot of people kept saying the same thing uh as people that are way too attached to fictional john how dare you i don't think that's really a question but apparently it's a common statement right now i I get it but (laughs) you know i feel like i feel like a lot of people are like really, really attached uh, to the the characters of the Magnus Archives, and that's that's wonderful. That's deeply, deeply touching. But it's also a them problem, <laughs> you know. <sighs> it oh, is a right. horror setting. So, if I ever nah. told you that you just you're just too much of a bleeding heart, Johnny. You're just too you're just too <laughs> sentimental and gentle. I mean, like fundamentally, uh, if you're really sad about. John and Martin and all the rest. Sounds like a skill issue, mate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's wrap things up a little bit here. So, uh, Johnny and Alex, let's start <laughs> with a, you. It's very late, and I'm just, I'm just like, yeah, what's, what's I'm just going to say? Really? Yeah, John, Johnny's just checked out. Set. He's now picking I'm fights. On everyone. Everyone. I'm just picking fights, picking fights with lots and lots of people who can make my life very hard. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Let's start with with Johnny and Alex. Um, like, there's going to be links in the doobly doo down below if you guys want to just click things and not listen. Um, but yeah, if you want to like, what are you doing now? Or like, plug things. Like, obviously the backers going on. But anything else you want to plug or anything you want to say? Uh, oh, uh, so obviously, um, obviously, back the Monty Cook Magnus Archives <laughs> RPG, please, because yes. it's going to be really good. Um, also, uh, keep an eye out for Magnus Protocol stuff, uh, which is the, uh, the sort of the sequel series, uh, sequel-ish series that's currently in production. 
um, that uh, myself and Alex are working on uh, as well. Not as we speak, but, you know, might as currently. well be. Um, <laughs> and uh, if and in, in RPG stuff in uh, my life, I'm also one half of MacGuffin and Company, uh, which is a sort of a, a small sort of indie uh, tabletop uh, games company and uh, we've recently put out uh, a few games called including up river down river uh, and uh, odd jobs which is like micro settings so check those out and uh, speaking for myself honestly i'm that i'm that deeply enmeshed with rusty quill if you just head to rustyquill.com pretty much anything that i'm doing will end up being tangentially connected there and in terms of what i'm doing right now i am beyond my eyeballs in uh creative manufacturing for magnus protocol which is the follow-up separate series but um make it sound as a so little, romantic as, as, a, <laughs> as a little insight uh we imminently have uh not in a way that will interfere with uh, any of the any of the excellent monty cook work but there's uh, a bunch of arg stuff as well augmented reality uh, alternate reality game sorry so as a result if people are interested oh. in playing around with more elements of the story world in a, in a new and compatible way that'll be Ooh. kicking around soon but to be clear it's 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 not this it's a yeah. it's a we should be clear separately. and i'm sure i'm sure that alex will that the that, that rusk will put out it out in communication but like <laughs> the monty cook rpg and the arg supported the man's protocol very separate please do not bother monty cook games <laughs> on the ARG, they, 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 they'll they'll just be very confused. different things. Very different. I'm gonna things. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get so much patient explanation from from Monty as to why it needs to stop when fan number six hundred is just like. So I found a dead URL. Is this anything to do with it? No, it's just <laughs> it's just a dead URL. I'm really I think I've figured out the there. code on the Magnus Archives RPG. Back a kit page. No, no, <laughs> no, no. Sweet, sweet child, no. Yeah. Keep those things separate. Yeah, I, you know, even just as I'm working on this game, I am, am being very sort of dogmatic about if it's not in an actual numbered episode, I'm of, of the Magnus Archives, not. Magnus Protocol is not anything yeah. uh, uh, beyond it. Like I know that uh, uh, you know, Alex has has encouraged everyone to listen to all the Q and As and everything. <laughs> I am sticking just to the stuff that's in in uh, the the podcast episodes themselves, just for the sake of canon and continuity and my own sanity. Oh, um, God, so yeah. uh, you know, yeah, none of that other stuff has really anything to Hang do on. with. Have you not read any of the archive of our own links I've been sending to you? <laughs> I keep telling you, if you're doing a fan work of your own work, it's not a fan work. It's a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Plus you got some things wrong, Johnny, so uh, <laughs> Yeah, your continuity was terrible. <laughs> he wouldn't say that. People were already typing, I knew this part was wrong. I even had someone like comment, they're like, oh, in the one picture the lighter was the wrong color or something like that. And I'm like, okay. And you know, if, if that's your thing, if you if you if if nitpicking is your thing, go for it. Go pick some mm -hmm. nets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, so on the flip side, so Monty, um, you like you obviously have the big backer kit going on right now. Is there anything you else you want to say or plug or anything like that before we go? Personally, what I'm I'm this is the game that I am working on right now, um, and. Uh, uh if if you're if you're tied into it um i have a i have a substack called game design theories which in which i have been talking about the very things that i am working on um in the magnus archives uh, rpg uh, but i should also say since we've got a uh hopefully a a, a bunch of people uh, watching and listening to this that are you know maybe like horror podcast rpgs um we just came out with one called old gods of appalachia and uh this was uh the lead designer uh shauna germain did a fantastic job um yes, the whole did. team they the game is beautiful in both really, its really. writing and in the art um and uh I, I i think you should check it out and you know it'll you know hold you over until magnus archives comes out 
<laughs> for sure. For sure. Uh, and then, yeah, there's, uh, keep keep tuned for Monica Games. There's more stuff coming out, I know. Uh, I'm also waiting on Pins and Needles for Rust and Redemption myself, personally. Um, <laughs> that's definitely one of the other things that I'm, I'm like waiting for. All these books, just so good. We're just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you everyone for being on uh, if you're watching this on my channel you probably should be uh, give like subscribes all of that stuff down below and the, all of the links for the everybody and everything should be in the doobly doo down below hopefully my smooth brain probably missed something so we'll see um, but yeah thank you for everyone coming on and as always stay healthy stay safe and have a good one eh?